attached our pressure washer pump to a small hole in the bottom plate. Now here's the fun part. All we do is start the pump, and the water pressure pushes the sheet metal out the almond-shaped hole, inflating it just like a balloon. Ha! <laughs> it's perfect! Jamie hydroforms eight half holes, <laughs> which are cut to size. That's one. Before being paired oh. together. <laughs> The four resulting pontoons are not only super streamlined... That's it. ...they should be super buoyant. <laughs> there are a number of key differences between this bike and the one that Adam built based on the photos. Now, the first and most obvious one is that the pontoons are tuna-shaped because they should move through the water with less effort as well as provide me with better steering. <laughs> Now, secondly, I've made the back pontoons able to telescope out. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. I'm hoping that the extra foot or two that I've put on these will keep me more stable. Looks about right. And then, of course, last but not least, I think it looks way cooler. Indeed. But to see if it works, Adam's up the ante with a head-to-head -head race. Jamie and I now intend to test our amphibious commuter bikes fully. That means land and sea. So we've come here to beautiful Horseshoe Lake in Fremont, California, because it provides all the terrains pretty much any bicycle commuter is going to encounter. We've got a little bit of pavement, we've got some dirt roads, and right down there behind me, a beautiful placid lake to ride our bikes upon. But first up, Jamie's gonna test his bike and make sure it actually floats. Jamie positions his front pontoons in the pond. That's one set. Before spreading out the rear ones for extra stability. <laughs> then there's one last piece of mechanical modification. An electric crankshaft that lowers the paddle wheel into the water. <laughs> Check that out. And before you know it, he's away. It's working. It's working exactly as it was designed. Both forwards and backwards, Jamie's design is looking good. Almost too good. One thing I'm wondering, though, is it looks like one pontoon is sinking. It may be a leak. Ah! If the goal was to improve on Adam's design, it's hardly mission accomplished. But with a competition coming up, Jamie's not going to abandon ship. The story goes that an ingenious engineer turned a motor car into a motorcycle to escape death in the desert. But Adam and Jamie's design... All right! Civilization, here we go! came closer to causing death... Stop that! Stop! ...than preventing it. But all is not lost. Because back at the shop, the guys have unearthed a series of photos that supposedly show the real deal. Oh, that's fascinating. Back at the start of this episode, Jamie and I decided to build our motorcycle without reference to these photos. And we did that partly because people say these are fake. Oh, same drive system. But given that our bike didn't work, we're now going to rebuild it to these specs. The engine must be reversed. What's interesting is that both of our design approaches, while incredibly similar, for instance, we use the exact same drive system, they differ in two distinct ways that may give his design a better chance of working than ours. All right, graphics, help me out. So, this is our bike. Note the rack and pinion steering and the engine high up on the back. It's these that made our bike hard to balance. But the French guy not only replaced the steering wheel with a tiller system that ought to give better control, but he also lifted the engine up 